Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 115 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Ruth Kaufman, author of the book At His Command, Wars of the Roses, Brides, number one. What's a lady to do when the king commands her to marry a lord, but she's falling for the knight sent to protect her from undesirable suitors and is a scribe for the king's rival for the throne? Could she defy her king for love? Ruth is the author of the Wars of the Roses Brides trilogy and my once and future love, Unsung Knights of the Round Table Number 1. Accolades include Booksellers Best Historical and Best First Book Award winner. She's also an on-camera and voice over talent. So again, her book is called At His Command, Wars of the Roses, Brides, Number One. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at SheWroteABook.com slash 115. So it's such a pleasure to have you as a guest, Ruth. I'm so excited to interview about this book. My first question is, what inspired you to write and publish this book? Well, thank you. I had always loved medieval romance novels, and I had read so many of them that I decided to see if I could write my own. And one day, the opening scene just sort of popped into my head, and I wrote that down and went from there. I saw a woman collapsed on a horse that was walking slowly over a hill and in a forest. And so then I thought, who would see her? What if someone was after her? Who would that be? Would the person who saw her help her or not? So I just went from there. That's incredible. So is this book your first book? Of It, it is my first book. And I've always loved the 15th century in England, in particular because of the later 15th century when Richard III was king. I was in a performance of Shakespeare's play, Richard III, in college and just fell in love with the time period and wanted to know how much of what Shakespeare said was actually true. And that just led me to be interested in some of the other kings, uh, such as Henry VI, who was king in my first book, that many more people are not as familiar with. Oh, that's interesting. That is so cool. So when you when you write the dialogue in your book, do you write using like that Shakespearean dialogue or is it more modern? I try to give a little bit of the flavor, but if you have too much, it will seem stilted and forced and it's hard for readers, I think, then to get into the story. But also I did spend quite a lot of time vetting the word origins of some of the words I use to make sure that as few as possible were modern, and if they were quote-unquote modern, it might have just been within the next century and certainly not today. Wonderful. And how do you how do you come up with your characters? Well, as I said, the, the people for the books I've written so far, and I've completed around 13 or 14 manuscripts, I usually just see a scene and one of the people is there. And then I think about who might be a good foil for that person to eventually fall in love with. And how do you, how do you develop those characters then? So, so once you, once you discover a a new character, what's your Mm -hmm. process to really flesh out that character? Well, I'm a pantser, which means I pretty much write through this from the seat of my pants. So what I try to do is look through their eyes. It's not really me telling their story. It's them showing me their story. So sometimes I'll do a character interview, as I know some authors do, you know, what is her greatest fear, that kind of thing, so that you can I can understand the character better. But if I can get deep enough into their point of view and really try to see the scene through his or her eyes, I hope that shows the character and who's your who's been your favorite character like of all time that's a very good question of all time of Um, all time not just this book because you've you've written several other books so what I have of all time well I really like each hero as I write him but I have to say I really do like the hero of my second book Adrian Uh, the second book is called follow your heart and I really like that character. So I guess of my characters, I would have to say him. And, and, and why him? What is it about him? 
just the situation that his life is in where his father had sort of gambled away the family's reputation and he wanted to earn it back. And he also has something of the site, which could have gotten him burned as a witch at that time. So he had to be careful with that. Wow. And he has like... to... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. He also has an evil twin brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to watch out for those evil twins. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. Awesome. Very cool. And looking at all of your books, mm-hmm. are all are they all are all the heroes in those books men, or do you have any female heroines? Well, each hero has a heroine to go with him. Uh, so I do go into both people's points of view. But it is interesting that my first two books do start in the male, in the hero's point of view, and the, as does the fourth book, and only the third book, which is called The Bride Tournament, uh, starts in the heroine's point of view. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, but they both cool. are somewhat equal. I, I don't necessarily sit down and measure, okay, she has 200 pages, he has 200 pages, but I do try to make it somewhat even so it's not too heavy on one or the other. Sounds like you, you, you're you looking for more quality content versus quantity content for each character. I hope so. <laughs> that's the yeah. goal. I mean, that's what counts. That's what counts yeah. as a reader. Wanna, you want to feel good about what you're reading versus, oh, this is just 200 pages of fluff. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I want to take them on a emotional and a story journey, but the first three books do sort of loosely follow the history of the Wars of the Roses at that time and how they how that would impact the lives of the characters. So what's been um what's been the coolest thing that you've experienced as far as like your fans oh. like your fans have said to you after reading your book? I actually did get one of those letters that I'd heard about where uh, a reader wrote to me and said she was going through some very difficult times in her life because her father had passed away and was very ill and that she was able to read my book while at the hospital and even for a few moments sort of just be carried away from her her uh, difficulties. And, and so I just thought that was so moving. That's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. So let's talk about your book covers. What, okay. uh, what is your process for your book covers, like choosing an image and mm-hmm. deciding, yep, that's the one that we're going to go with? Well, I work with a cover designer because combining all the elements isn't my forte. And even searching through the stock photos of models, which the author usually does need to do, can just be so time-consuming because especially for medievals, not only do I need to find someone who represents the hero, and if I want a couple, then the hero and the heroine, they need to be wearing the right kind of clothes and in a position that I personally am comfortable with. So that's a a sort of a monumental task right there. Uh, Then, because I do have some battles in my books, but I don't always want, you know, sort of a war pose, that kind of thing. For my first book, I... The the heroine lives in a real castle, which I actually did get to visit, which was so much fun. So the picture in the upper left-hand corner of her castle, I actually took, and my designer was able to use that. So that was really neat. And the flowers on the cover, I mean, some of these things are subtle, and readers may not pick up on it, but the flowers are marguerites or daisies, which figure prominently in the story. And the hero that I picked resembled my vision of the hero himself, but I chose to have a sword covering part of his face in part because I've heard that some readers like to have room for imagination and in part because at the time this cover model was so popular and I wanted people who might know that to see past that and just look at the book itself. It's genius that you wouldn't even think to, you wouldn't even think about, oh, where have I seen these models before on other book covers? So that's that's fantastic. And I was going to ask about why why is his face covered in your first book, but in all the other books, mm-hmm. all the faces are revealed. You can see their faces. Well, that's exactly why. <laughs> and in the second book, I decided to have a couple because that's a big choice too. You know, do you have a couple? Do you have him? Do you have her? Do you have just some image 
from the period, uh, but I, I did choose a couple because I found one that somewhat resembled them. But I personally am not a fan of shirtless men on the cover, especially if they're with a woman who is clothed. So it's very hard to tell, but the, the only man I could find with a woman that represented the couple I had written, he's actually shirtless, but because he's standing behind her, you can't really tell. I'm looking at that now. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I was looking now, through, I'm like, yeah, no one is shirtless in these covers. And then as soon as you said that, I zoomed yeah. in. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he is, but, but you can't tell. Right, and I don't think people would notice that because there is other stuff going on. Now, in terms of, this is from my second book, Follow Your Heart, the heroine is a Blazenwright or a stained glass painter, which was so much fun to research, but I really needed to have an appropriately period stained glass window on the cover, and finding a stock photo of that was proved to be so difficult that I designed this window myself with the help of my cover designer. Oh, wow. So it's really kind of cool because we could say the heroine helped me design it. So it's yeah. really her it's really her window and not somebody else's. Oh, that's so cool. I love it. So that's all the work that goes on behind the scenes to try to find the right uh person. Yeah. And earlier you said something about looking for for a model who's in a position that you're mm-hmm. comfortable with. What did you yeah. mean by that? Well, sometimes, in my opinion, you you know, every author and every reader has different views, but I want to have covers that that suit the image in my head, and so I personally didn't want a cover where they're kissing passionately. I like to have at least one of them looking at the reader to sort of make a connection that way, is my thought, rather than having them focusing on each other. I also, there's a lot of images where, for example, the the hero is holding his sword and crouching, or as I said, many, many, one, many, many images are of him shirtless or wearing an outfit that he wouldn't wear. Uh, so those are some of the things I try to keep in mind. And you can do a lot with Photoshop, but there's still some things that look awkward. So... Um, there's that to think about. Excellent. Yeah, I love I love all of your covers. They look Thank really you. well put together. So, Thank Ruth, you. what do you love What do you love most about being an author? I like getting lost in the characters' worlds and seeing the things that they do. Being a dancer might be difficult for some people who like to know what's coming down the road, but I prefer the surprises that my characters come up with. And so often it's like, cool, look at that, now what? So I'm I'm sort of on the journey with them, which I really enjoy. But sometimes it can also be frustrating because uh, the research may or may not play out the way that I want to, and I don't like to take too many liberties. I like to be as accurate as my research and I can possibly be. Wonderful. Well, Rose, thank you so much for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 115 to learn more about our author and her awesome book. So thanks again, Ruth. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you for having me. That just whizzed by. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic.